something a little bit different for the channel and something which hopefully some of you will find at the very least interesting and hopefully for some people actually potentially inspiring and it might help you on your own journey. So one of the things which I've always loved to do, whether that comes from being a writer, being a Disney fan, being a mum, being anything, is to share my own experiences. And that's not to say that what I do is right or the only way to do it, but it's a way to do it that I have found has worked. And you never know when somebody else might just need that little boost or that little kick or that little bit of extra information and think, oh, OK, that's how I could do it. And I think that that's something that really is important in the world of filmmaking as well. I mean, for years and years and years and years, I would have never, ever, ever considered myself to be somebody that would even think about getting into filmmaking. That seemed to be something that was reserved for people that had been to film school, people that lived in Hollywood, all of this kind of thing. Um, people specifically, um, men it seemed to be, that had spent their youths, um, youth running around with their, you know, uh, parents, Super 8 cameras, making stop start motion pictures with their friends, and then went on to become Steven Spielberg and James Cameron and people like that. And although what I would like to share is not in any way, shape or form going to get me to Hollywood, it might not get you to Hollywood, but it might be something that gets you started. And, and that's what I would like to be able to share. Um, people have kind of said to me, how did you get into it? And I don't take any offence at that. You know, I'm in my early 40s. I'm married. I've got a child. I've got pets. The only reason I can make this video right now is because the puppies at the groomers. So it uh, work and all of this kind of stuff. So how did somebody like me get into it? And how do I find the time to do it? And how do I get the equipment? And how have I found the people? And just all of this kind of thing. So over the next few weeks or months even because I'd like to be able to talk a bit about the process with footsteps as well which we're not shooting until October and then um, hopefully afterwards be able to talk about how the actual shoot went and that kind of thing um, I'd like to be able to just make a few videos and give people um, just a snapshot of my experience and as I will reiterate time and time again I'm not saying do what I do. I'm just saying this is what I did and this is where it's got me. So hopefully if filmmaking is something that's on your mind, um, whether you have a story that you want to, you know, you, it's, it's every writer's, what well, most writers dreams to have their book, their stories optioned and be picked up by some Hollywood producer and turned into a mega blockbuster. But especially with what's going on in the film industry at the moment. And of course, we're all in solidarity with, with the writers over there and everybody that's affected. It's, it's an even better time, especially if you're British and we don't have that kind of thing so much over here anyway. It's an even better time to be thinking, I've got a story that I could turn into a script myself. And now I've got this script and I'd like to talk a little bit about how to do that as well. Now what do I do? I don't know how to operate a camera. I don't have a camera to operate. How would I find actors? How would I find the people to... Just all of that. So I will be talking to you about what I did, who I reached out to, who I pestered and said, can I come and do stuff with you and see if any of that's remotely helpful for you so that you can do what I did and think nobody's going to come knocking on the door and saying, oh, Pipe, I've read one of your books. Come and make this film with me. You seem like you could be an amazing director. You've never done a thing in your life. You can barely operate your own phone camera. But nobody was ever going to say that to me. So I did what I always do in these situations and I made it happen for myself. I don't have a film school background. All of my background is in criminal justice because I used to be a police officer. Is that helpful in filmmaking? Actually, there's transferable skills in nearly everything that you do. And one of those for me is that a lot of my stories and therefore my scripts and my screenplays and things involve police officers. Because something I was told quite early on is write what you know. Yes, it's fiction. So you can write about anything. You can create anything. Of course you can. But sometimes to 
add a bit of authenticity to what you write is if you already know something, if you already know that language, the jargon, the lingo, all of that kind of thing. If you know the way that somebody would behave in a situation, you can put your own stamp on it and your own experiences. And it just it makes it seem a little bit more believable sometimes. So no matter what your background, I mean, will I be wrestling people to the floor on my film sets and putting them in handcuffs only if they don't do what the directors tell? No, not really. Of course, I won't be using any of those kind of things. But again, there's other skills within policing which I have brought to, to, to the set. And these are all other things which I'll be talking about as well. Anyway, uh, it will be waffly because that's the way that I do things. I have swapped my iPhone for an iPad to record on and it's a little bit more grainy, but it's easier for me to do editing. I never thought that was something that I would say, but I've found an app called Filmmaker Pro. And anybody that's an actual filmmaker out there, an actual DOP or editor is probably tearing their hair out thinking, oh my God, that's the worst filmmaking app you could ever use. But for someone like me, who a couple of weeks ago had never edited anything and literally just used to do everything in a one shot even for YouTube and then just stick it on and hope for the best. Having something to play with and something to practice with before maybe one day being able to use some decent software, then go for it. Don't worry about if somebody says, oh my God, I can't believe you're using that. If it works for you to help teach you some of the tools of the trade, that's what you need. And who's to say that everyone can afford these really expensive softwares and things like that as well? That's another thing. Use what you have. Most people have got a camera phone these days, so you can use that. Most people have got a pen and paper or a laptop to be able to write things down. Use it. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks, months, years, who knows, for as long as people will put up with me and my waffling. And I really hope that it is interesting and I really hope that it might inspire people. Perhaps it's entertaining, even if it's just to say, my God, Pipe, whoever gave you a camera and let you talk to it. Hopefully people will get something out of it. Um, if people do have any specific questions, I would love to answer specific questions about different things that I've done as well. Um, and I'm hoping that I might be able to ask uh, some of my friends to be able to give little tips and bits and pieces. Uh, and, you know, I'm always going to talk about Neil Marshall because why would I not? Um, and he has obviously been massively influential on me and gives me little snippets of advice and bits and pieces now and again. So I'll be sharing some of the things that he's told me over the last couple of years as well. So thank you very much. Um, leave comments here if you particularly have something that you want to ask or I imagine if you follow me, if you're subscribed on here, you probably follow me um, on Tinternet anyway. So it's either JaninePipe28 on Twitter or JaninePipe28 on Instagram. Thank you so much and just take care, everyone. Bye. <laughs>